God is all about relationship and he wants to have that relationship with you today. He wants to meet with you today and we believe we're going to meet with him right here on Hope Today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tom. I'm here with Sydney and Amy. Amy, we have a guest coming up that's got a tremendous story. Mm, I, listen, are you looking for wholeness in your body, soul, spirit and mind? If so, this is the program for you. Our dear friend Sue Detweiler is here and she's talking about, you know, miracles are often a beginning for you and me to dive deeper into God's presence when you're helpless and you know that the only answer for you in your life is Jesus. That is the beginning of a transformation in your life. So guys, this is going to be good. Here's some questions she brings up in her book. Do I live a stress-filled life? Am I carrying heavy burdens? Am I experiencing financial pressure, trauma, addiction, broken relationships, divorce? I mean, there, there is a lot that we're dealing with here on earth, but God, God brings us wholeness and healing. So I am excited about today. I think this is going to be such a great topic to dive into because just like Amy said, we're all walking through things, caring through things. But even in my life, time and time again, when I feel anxious, where I feel overwhelmed, it is so important that I'm like, you know what, Jesus, this is going on. And I give it to him to cast our cares and to cast our burdens mm -hmm. upon the Lord. And I love it says in the scriptures that he will teach us that we can learn from Jesus, but it's also in the power of his presence. I don't know about you, but there's been times when I'm just like, even recently I had a panic attack that it was just all consumed. Mm -hmm very overwhelming. I couldn't breathe. I don't know if you've ever went through anything like that. And in the immediately, like I just, I called up a friend and she just started praying for me and the peace of God just like came over me. So if you've ever dealt with panic attacks, anxiety, it's not, we are all going through something. We just want to be here for you. And just as always at any point during the show that you want to give us a call, give us a call on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Cause you know, Tom, we are, this is why we have hope today is because we want to bring people hope and let them know we are here for them through the power of Jesus. I Absolutely. You know, you think about it. We we generally have our needs provided for like times in history people didn't and there was stress related to that. We sometimes we don't know those stresses, but stresses ha have a lot to do with relationship and a lot of relationship dynamics going on in society today that just bring that those things to the forefront and give us that those stress filled times and God is able to meet you right where you are today, no matter what that stress is, no matter what that thing is that you and your family are going through, God can meet you right there. And so we're going to hear about that more. Amy. I know. We all desire to receive a breakthrough in most areas of our life, whether when it comes to our finances, relationships, or for some of us, our desire to be healed, both physically and spiritually. Suzette Detweiler is our next guest, and she is a speaker, author, and host of the Healing Rain podcast. Her newest book is also called Healing Rain, and she joins us now to share about her own healing journey and how you too can receive your very own healing breakthrough. Sue, welcome back to Hope Today. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Sue, as I was reading this book, first of all, just the title sounds good and feels right. Healing Rain. Where did that title for your book come from? The title for your podcast? What is your story with Healing Rain? Well, you know, we've been in ministry a very long time. And there was, at one point, I, as a pastor, I was overseeing a school and my assistant principal, she had cancer. And I remember penning the words to the song Healing Rain, uh, which became a part of an album. Um, so it's co-written. And that song would be used as our mission teams would travel to the nations and, and literally people would be healed as that song was sung. And so the name of the book really comes from that song that was written in a very practical way of praying for someone I love to be soaked in God's presence. You know, in Isaiah 22, 22, it talks about the keys of David and you open your book with two keys and then you give us seven keys for divine healing. Will you tell us first about the two keys? 
Well, the keys that Jesus gives to us are keys to open doors of access. And those keys, I, I had a vision of Jesus carrying these keys and literally wanting to give them, to put them in our hands. You know, he wants to do far more than what we hope for or imagine. And he's died on the cross and by his stripes were healed, but, but somehow we've got to place those keys into the locks so that they can be unlocked. And that first key is really a key of redemption, of knowing all that he's paid for on the cross and accessing the healing power that comes from him. I love it. The seven keys to divine health in your book. If you don't mind, I'm going to just read them and then I want to have you just comment on them. The key of freedom, the key of connection, the key of health, the key of prosperity, the key of influence, the key of purity, and the key of rest. Do these give us access to healing rain? I believe that they do. And often there may be one area that you're struggling with and, and just having that place can bring about a real breakthrough in your life. And one area for many people is rest. There's just a very simple thing that they are not, <laughs> or we are not remembering the Sabbath to keep it holy and really resting in God. And, you know, it's a gift to us. It's something that... God made for us to rejuvenate us. And sometimes we're not accessing all of God's healing because we're not resting in him. Okay, for some people they are like, rest, are you kidding me? I can't rest, I have so much to do. There's work, there's marriage, there's kids, there's sports, there's friends, there's church. Give me an idea of what does rest look like? How can I practically rest? I think rest is one of the most practical things that you can do. And if you've ever had a perfect storm in your life where things stack up and, and your body stops working like it was made to work, rest is probably your key. And, and one of the things I think we don't realize is that when God established the Sabbath, you know, when he made human beings on the sixth day and on the seventh day, he rested you know, that was our first day of creation. So we were not resting based on we had gotten all our work done. We were resting on the basis of his finished work. And I think as Americans, we try to get everything done and then rest, and it's not working for us. Rather, we need to just let things drop sometimes and rest get perspective from God. And it's an amazing thing how rest will actually give you greater clarity and confidence and it will heal your body. So when people are reading your book, you share in depth stories about your personal health struggles and what happened to your son? Will you share your story mm -hmm. and how you walked through that pain and trauma into a place of wholeness? Yes, well, we had raised four children already. They were teenagers, but we felt called to adopt. And in Brazil, two young men, 12 and eight, um, they had come from a very tough background. They'd come from mental illness and had gone through abuse, had born drug addicted. But these two sweet boys <laughs> became a part of our family. Um, and as they grew into young men, uh, 
when they reach that age of accountability where sometimes there's an experimentation with drugs, for them, it was like flipping a switch and they both became drug addicted almost immediately. In that struggle of going back and forth, when my son Dre was 23 years old, um, I received a phone call that he had died of an apparent drug overdose. And of course, you're not expecting that you don't want that. He had actually been clean from drugs for about five months. So I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, and for me, that was a huge trauma. I, I remember it being very difficult to talk about, to think about. I, um, I met with a counselor to talk about my grief. Um, and sometimes our body will end up mirroring our heart. And one thing that happened is I failed a stress test. And so my doctor um, scheduled surgery that where they go in and they do the dye in your arteries to look at your heart. And during that time period, um, you know, they gave me medicine to travel around with. My, my children, of course, were concerned. And I remember having an encounter um, where I felt the just the heat of God's love, like hot oil from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And in this encounter, I knew that God was healing my heart. I mean, I could just feel my whole chest was hot. And he spoke to my heart that he was not only healing my physical heart, but he was healing my broken heart. And I found out later that you can actually die of broken heart syndrome, that you can have traumas that impact you emotionally, and then they show up physically. Um, I'm so grateful to the Lord. I was completely healed that day. And I know uh, that God has used that to bring healing to others. Let's talk about being brokenhearted for just a minute. You know, somebody's been believing God for a son or a daughter, or they've been believing for their marriage and it's ended up in a divorce and they're just brokenhearted and somebody betrayed them so deeply and so painfully. Like, what do you do at that point? Like, what's our, what's our one action step that we take? What, how do we break out of that darkness and into the light, so to speak? This, this is not easy for any of us, you know, when we're in the midst of that struggle. And if you're a human being, you've been through that type of struggle. And the pain that you experience emotionally is intense. Uh, I do believe that we need um, a healing team around us at that point. And the reason I say healing team is sometimes we need others to help us with our future for, you know, for, for healing itself. For, for myself individually, positioning my heart before the Lord becomes really important. And taking enough time where I can hear his voice, where I can be completely honest with him in my feelings, often I'll journal, you know, where I'm, I'm telling God, I feel this way, it hurts, my, my heart's broken. And then I'll listen for his response and I'll write his response down in my journals. And his words bring healing to my heart. Now, I think sometimes we just try to rush through the difficult things that we face or just um, medicate them rather than really positioning our hearts before the Lord to be healed. I love what you do in your chapters, how you will write down a scripture and say, put your name in here. Amy, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Amy, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I mean, Amy, you are free. Amy, you walk in health and life. Um, how important is the word of God 
in moments of trauma and pain and disappointment and sickness and disease? Like what are, what are three scriptures that you just hang on to that, that help you get to wholeness? Wow. Choosing only three is hard, but I, I love the fact that God revealed his name in Exodus 15, 26 as I am the Lord who heals you, that his very nature, his very character is to heal. And he repeats that in Psalm 103, when he talks about, I heal all your diseases. I forgive all your sins. He's such a loving God that, that he's a father that comes to us. I'm also very grateful for Ephesians 3.20. Um, and if you've never read that in the Passion Translation, I, I recommend it. But it's talking about how God wants to do far more than we hope for or imagine. And sometimes when we're going through a traumatic life experience, it feels like our life has come to an end. And it's really important that God has a future for us, far more than we can hope for or imagine. And when we can shift our minds and believe that, that not only does God have a future, but he's dreaming on our behalf and his dreams are way bigger than ours, somehow it shifts our, our desperation to the truth that we have a future and a hope in him. Amen. Sue, will you take a moment? Will you just pray for our viewers, our friends, our family right now that are in traumatic situations, uh, sickness, disease situations? Just will you pray for breakthrough in their life today? I'd love to. I'm, I'm going to stretch my hands towards the screen. And sometimes if you're watching and you want to stretch your hands towards me just as a point of contact, Lord, I pray for a release of your healing grace right now. First of all, Lord, I pray for a gift of faith to begin to fill their hearts that they know that they turn this on right now and you're speaking to them that you are their healer. I pray that you would heal bodies. Lord, I pray that just like I saw blind eyes open and deaf ears open recently when I prayed, Father, I pray for those physical miracles that you would do. But Lord, I also pray for the emotional breakthroughs, the centering of their heart, that literally you would touch their heart and that their heart would be made new today, God. Mm. Father, if there's any forgiveness that they need to let people go, I, I pray that that forgiveness would flow. Even if they need to forgive themselves, help them make that choice. I pray in Jesus' name that there would be no blocks to their healing, that they could receive all that you've done for them on the cross. In Jesus name. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Sue. Listen, if you want to experience healing rain, wholeness and breakthrough in your body, soul, mind, heart, this is the book for you. Healing Rain by Sue Detweiler. Thank you so much, Sue, for being a part of the program today. Thank you for having me. When we return in 60 seconds, we're going to discuss what scripture says about God's desire for us to be healed. We'll be right back. Remember your childhood joy and excitement when being invited to a party? You felt valued, included, wanted, and ready to have a good time. Best-selling author Bob Goff believes that every day of life can be lived with the same childlike enthusiasm and sense of humor. Inside Love Does, you'll learn that love is a verb, not just a feeling. His insights and joyful reflections will help you discover what it means to live fully alive, even as you serve others. Prepare to encounter remarkable stories from Bob Goff's life as he shares how living and loving to the fullest is the best way to make Jesus known in this world. 
Request your copy of Love Does when you give your best gift this month. Your gift today will help Cornerstone Television show the life-changing love of Jesus through Christ-centered TV programs. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. We're so glad that you're choosing to stay with us on Hope today as we just wrapped up our conversation with Sue Detweiler talking about healing. And as Amy and Sue were having the conversation, the Holy Spirit, the Lord just started speaking to me specifically that there's somebody that is watching that has sclerosis of the liver, that it is tied to alcohol and to addiction. And we just want to encourage you today, if that is you, if you have this diagnosis, if you have a struggle, that there is no condemnation, there is no shame, just because if you picked up a bottle or because of what you're walking through doesn't disqualify you from being a Christian. Look, we understand that there's so many people right now that are battling. There's so many people right now that are going through things and trying to ease the pain and ease the hurt of what they're walking through. So if that is you, if you are battling right now, we want to connect with you. We want to partner with you. That is why we are here on Hope Today. And at Cornerstone Television Network, we have prayer partners that are here 24-7 to pray with you, to stand with you. And we have a scripture today that comes from Exodus 15, 26. And it's very simple. And it says this, for I am the Lord who heals you. And what we love about that scripture so much, and I just think of the names of God, is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that heals us. And one thing when it comes to healing, that I think a lot of times it's hard to talk about it, but that the Lord will take his time when it comes to healing. Miracles are sometimes very instant and very sudden, but when it comes to healing, God will go through a process. God will do things within your heart and within your spirit. I've walked through this personally in my life of going through just like trauma that I endured as a, chi as a child and the process of healing and going through it as much as I wanted it to instantly, God, take it away. He was doing such a deep work that sometimes when it comes to healing the infractions of our heart and healing the things that have just crushed us, that God begins to do such a tender work because of those pieces. And be encouraged today. If something has fallen apart in your life and you feel like, I don't know what is gonna happen, the good news is, is God is a resurrecting God and he has called us to an ascended life and he will breathe upon your situation. He will be right there in the midst of his presence and as he's delivering you, as he's holding you, as he's caressing you in the midnight hour, just trust and believe that God is doing a deep, deep work in your heart and he's not going to leave you alone. He's going to speak to you and give you the words and the wisdom and the plan to just sit with him, to walk it out and also to have those around you come around and support you. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, it's such a good word, Sydney. And uh, as Sue was speaking and as we were talking about healing, I was thinking about Isaiah 64, which I read in my own devotional time today before we came down to do the program. And, and there's, a, there's a cry of, of, of Isaiah's heart, oh, that thou would rend the heavens and come down. You know, you just get this picture of God just tearing the clouds apart, tearing the sky apart and coming down. And haven't we all been there? Haven't we all been to that place where we're looking so much for God to rend the heavens and come down? But it goes on to say, it goes, when you did awesome things, which we did not expect. I love that because I, I you know, I'm done with giving God advice, okay? <laughs> I, when I pray, I certainly have things I say to him, but it's like he knows better than me. He knows better than us what he wants to do. And man, when he does things better than we can expect, he's, he's believing, he's wanting you to believe him for that right now, that he can do better and awesome things we didn't, did not expect. And then he says uh, that, speaking of us, he says, who acts in behalf of the one who waits for him. And it's just like what Sidney was saying, is that there are times when we, he's doing a deep work and he's doing a work that we don't like the waiting part of that. And sometimes there's a time to act and there's a time to get out and there's a time to, to, to do things and God calls us to that. But there's a lot of times that it's wait, wait, wait. I'm doing something. You're gonna see it manifest itself soon. So those are just some words for you today. God spoke those things in my own heart when I was uh, praying and reading the word this morning and he's speaking them to you right now as well. I've heard the word heart like 50 times just in this. There's something going on in our hearts at all times. Actually, the scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of that heart flows the issues of life. Listen, I have sat here talking on air, brokenhearted, so disappointed, yeah. so discouraged. So that was just wrong. It was it wasn't right. 
here's what I want to encourage you. First of all, forget. You have to forgive. Your heart will never be okay if you're not walking in forgiveness. And, and honestly, you can't do that without the help of God. You cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. You got to repent. Sometimes it's like, I think I've got a problem yeah. <laughs> and I need to repent and I need to guard my heart and I need to get back right with God and I need to walk in peace. You, you're not going to have, you're not going to have peace with God with a bunch of chaos in your heart. And, and so like, what are you thinking about day in and day out? Because whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're saying, that's what's in your heart. So I think today is a great day to stop and reset, to get like a heart transplant and say, God, I want my heart right with you. I want my heart right before God. And maybe you've never given your heart to God. Maybe you've been ignoring him. You're kind of like playing with it. Like, oh, I watch Christian TV. That's good and that, whatever. Maybe like just draw a line in the sand. Don't go another day without Jesus being the Lord and the Savior of your life. Today is your day to get your heart right with God, to get, guard your heart, to have the healing power of God working in your life, your marriage, your job, your kids, your family. It is God's will and God's best for your life. And you know, just even as we're about to close this program, the one thing that when you're walking through a heartbroken situation that I have done time and time again, and I've said this before, and I just appreciate what Amy, her transparency, because all of us have been on here brokenhearted, mm -hmm. believing for things, just sad and downtrodden. But the one thing God has just showed me is when you go into that place, that place of prayer, and you worship him for who he is, you praise him and you say, I thank you for who you are, God. I thank you that you're moving in this situation. I thank you that you're a good God. I thank you, Father God, that you have promises when you start declaring what God, who he is, and you start getting your mind off the problem, it is so amazing what takes place in those moments. I've had so many moments, I've, my heart has been crushed beyond belief, but when I begin to lift up the praises of Adonai, when I begin to sing of his goodness, when I begin to thank him for who he's my deliverer, he's my rescuer, he's my all in all, there's a shift that happens and that even that healing begins to take place. That's so good, Sydney. And you know what? You can passively wait or you can actively wait looking and expecting that God is gonna move mightily. He's wanting to move. His time is his time, but his miracles are awesome. On tomorrow's Hope Today, serving as a reminder that we are never alone and God is always with us, military spouse and author Jessica Manfrey examines the story of Ruth and offers encouragement to those who desire to strengthen relationships live in authentic community, and soak up the love of God. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.